Hi all, it's Brandy from Brush by Brandy here and we're back with another week, which means a new furniture finish video. This week we're gonna take this white enamel console and flip it into this beautiful blue finish. I really love how this buffet turned out, but I really hated how it started. It had this really awful factory finish on it. Um, now this one was chosen as a custom finish from my inventory, and so my customer got to choose her finishes, and she knew she wanted a wood stain top, which means I needed to strip this top down to the bare wood. When I'm stripping a top, I usually do a test spot to determine if I should sand my top. Um, in this case, it was so thick that I knew, knew I needed to use a chemical stripper. I much prefer harsh chemical strippers over the eco-friendly ones. To me, eco-friendly just means ineffective. This top did end up taking two coats even using the harsher, harsher chemical strippers. You want to make sure you wear gloves and work in an open space when you're using harsh chemical strippers. This one is made by Jasco. With each coat, I brushed on a thin coat, let it sit for about 15 minutes, and then came back with a scraper blade and scraped off the coating. Using a chemical stripper doesn't mean you get to skip sanding. It just means you need to do it in addition to sanding. Once I was done with this top, I came back with my surf prep sanding system and I sanded this top smooth using an 80, 120, then 220 grit sandpaper. This top had what I like to call a dust collector around the edges, which is just that little crevice around the edges that serves no purpose. And so I chose to go ahead and fill this one using Dixie Mud. I just scraped a layer of Dixie Mud into the crevice using a spatula tool and then sanded that smooth. It just looks like an inlay in the wood. I'm now going to apply an oil-based pre-stain conditioner to help my stain take more evenly on this top. And one of the big reasons I did this was because this was a paint grade wood and you can tell by some of the irregular grain patterns in this wood, this wood was always meant to be um, painted by the manufacturer and so they use a lesser quality wood on a painted finish. So it's important to know the difference between stain grade wood and paint grade wood. This was definitely a paint grade wood. Because I knew this wood wasn't going to stain extremely well, I used a gel stain. Gel stain sits more on top of the wood, almost like a paint. It doesn't absorb into it. And so I was able to layer this gel stain with three layers and get an, a semi-even finish. You can see those dark streaks in the middle. Those are some of those wood irregularities that are in this paint grade wood. The no paint gel stain in espresso wiped on beautifully over this top. And then I let it dry 24 hours in between each coat. After three coats, it looked pretty good. I did decide to add a coat of Dixie Belle Slick Stick to this piece. Slick Stick is a gripping primer and I'm using it because this piece have this, has this thick white enamel finish on it and I want my paint to be able to have something to bite onto. So even though it's solid wood underneath, because I'm working over the top of this factory finish, I want to give my paint something to bite onto. The finishes on this piece have a theme and if you'll notice I'm using the theme of squares. I've got the square moldings on the front of this piece so inside I'm going to add this Spanish tile decoupage paper from Dixie Belle which repeats the square patterns. I like to find little cues like that in my piece and then repeat them throughout and it really makes the design come out cohesive in the end. I started out by just trimming the excess edges off the decoupage paper and then I laid a coat of satin clear coat onto my doors over the top of my slick stick gripping primer. Slick stick normally comes in white. I did tint my slick stick with a few drops of caviar to make it this medium gray color, a little closest, closer to what my finished color is going to be. Once I have my paper all laid in my coat of satin clear coat, I came over the top while it was still wet and I brushed on another coat of satin clear over the top. This is going to seal my um, paper in. It's going to encapsulate it and make it a permanent part of my furniture finishes. This decoupage paper from Dixie Belle is actually a rice paper, so it's pretty porous. And having the clear coat underneath and then clear coat over top, it's going to seep through the paper and saturate it completely um, in that clear coat itself. All right, so now I need to seam this paper together with another piece to finish filling in my design. The squares on this make it really easy to seam this paper together. I just trimmed my second sheet, matched up my edge right along the first one, and then I can go ahead and use a razor knife to cut the excess paper off. I'm still going to use um, all of the scraps on this piece to fill in the bottom of this door. It ended up taking me two sheets of the paper for each one of these doors. While I'm patching in the smaller pieces, I just repeat the same process with a coat of satin clear coat underneath, a coat of satin clear coat over top to encapsulate my paper. I rubbed it down smooth with my hands and then I'm going to let that dry and I'll go ahead and come back and put another coat of satin clear over the top of the complete design.
I also want to fin finish the inside of this piece. I don't always finish the inside of my pieces, but this had this gross yellow finish on the inside. Had it been just a solid wood, I probably would have just oiled it and left it. But I went ahead and rolled on a coat of Dixie Belle paint in Palmetto, which is this rich green. It's a little bit of contrast. It pulls in some of the colors from my um, tile paper and it coordinates well with the blue on the outside. This just gave my piece overall a much cleaner look. And then when you open the doors, you can see how fun it was on the inside. Let's talk a little bit about the finishes on this piece. So when you're working with customers on custom orders, um, it has good and bad points. And one of the good points is you get someone you get to collaborate with finishes on, um, but it also means that you have someone else's input that you have to consider. And so in this case, my customer described the colors that she wanted, and I tried um, out a couple different color combinations and then showed her photos and let her choose the one that she liked the best. This first combination that I'm using is Dixie Belle in the Navy, and then I mixed Dusty Blue with a little bit of Anthony antebellum blue for the highlight in the center. That ended up being a little bit too teal for her and so we toned it down and just used in the navy and dusty blue. It usually takes me two coats to do one of my finishes anyways so it's not really a hassle to show my customer the concepts of colors and then just change them on my second coat if I need to. All right, so once we had our colors nailed down and I knew my final colors were gonna be in the navy and dusty blue, I'm coming back with my second coat and we're gonna go ahead and apply the blended finish to these doors um, with our final finish. Blending over moldings might seem intimidating, but I actually think you'd be surprised to hear me say, I think it's a little bit easier. So the moldings allow you to kind of hide any transitions between your blend and all the curves and crevices of the moldings themselves. And so it actually can hide a lot of flaws that you might have in your finish. Now this was a beautiful finish on its own, but I think going over the moldings actually made it a little bit easier. So I started out by laying on my paint colors. I laid out um, my dusty blue in the center of my doors. Um, I did kind of a trial run where I tried to blend out each individual square on these doors and it just looked messy to me. So in the end, I decided to kind of frame out the center square on the doors. Um, I basically laid out my dusty blue in a circle in the centers and then came out around um, and framed it out with some in the navy. And then I'm gonna come back and blend those two together, working one individual square at a time. Once I've, got, once I've got my paint laid onto my piece, I came back with my oval medium brush and I'm just gonna use a swirling motion in each individual box and work those little boxes by themselves. Um, this can kind of create some muddiness on the In the Navy paint and so once I did that part, I just came back with some In the Navy and I trued back up that darker color. All right, so I added in that in the navy around the very outer edges, and now I'm coming back with my um, neutral brush, which is my oval medium. A little bit of water, I didn't, I'm not adding any paint, I'm just using the water to work it together, the paint that's on my surface. Okay, I really haven't touched this center square from when I originally painted it, because it really stays its original color, which was the uh, dusty blue. I really am just touching around the edges. So I'm pretty happy with this. You know, I'm working my way around. So I, I, kind of, I started, we started in the center. 
I worked out my squares, created my basic frame, and then worked out each individual square, square just swirling the colors together. Once I liked that, I cleaned up my darkest blue around the edges, and I'm pretty happy with how this looks. Okay, let's talk a little bit about waxes. So after this point right here, once my paint is dry, I'm going to come back and I'm going to detail each one of these little boxes with wax. So now we're going to move over to these two boxes here. This is one that just has the paint on it. It's a really pretty finish on its own. That's one that has waxes on it. What I like to use for wax detailing are a variety of natural bristle artist brushes. I like natural bristles for waxing. All of the natural bristle artist brushes I like to use for my wax detailing are available in my Amazon shop, which is linked in the description for this post. I take a fairly thin natural bristle artist brush. I'm going to outline each box on the inside and the outside of the frame. And then I take a thicker brush and I'm going to smudge out those lines and then take a rag and buff away the excess wax. The next step is to detail around the edge of the boxes on the outside with a little bit of Dixie Belle gold gilding wax. I'm going to apply the gold gilding wax using my finger and I start on the outer corners of the box and I'm going to take my full finger and I'm going to pull it towards the center. I start on the um, outside corner because that's where I want my wax the heaviest and then it's going to thin out as I pull my finger away from it. This gives me a really pretty smudged look um, with heavier in the corners and then lighter as it's going towards the center of each box. With the dark smudgy wax in all of the crevices and then the gold highlights on the outer edges, it gives these boxes depth and dimension. This is a pattern I repeat fairly often. I, I like to use dark waxes or dark color in the lower crevices of my paint finishes and then I'll use something lighter and brighter on the outer edges and this gives it that depth and dimension, the contrast of the colors. Here you can see my piece with all of the wax detailing done. I went ahead next and sprayed this entire piece in two coats of Dixie Belle Gator Hide and then I came back and added on my original hardware that I had spray painted in a gold finish. The sides of this piece got a little bit of gold stenciling with the gilding wax and then you can see on the inside the paper on those drawers and everything ties together that beam of squares. This piece has a real wow factor and the chore here was to make sure that the details of the piece really stood for themselves and my paint finishes didn't try to compete with them. If you enjoyed this video, I hope you'll click that subscribe button. You can find a link for everything I used in the description of this post and more Brushed by Brandy available on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, YouTube, and my website at brushedbybrandy.com.